Welcome everyone to Behind the Scenes of Inside Investigations. Our senior investigative producer, Marnie Zambri, is joining us to talk about Tiny Home. What's that about? Okay, so Tiny House is about a couple that decided they were gonna downsize, buy a tiny home from um, a tiny home dealer here in Georgia and have it delivered to their home in Granbury, Texas. Okay, that sounds pretty simple. What went wrong? The guy wasn't building the, the tiny houses. Well, actually, this is what happens a lot of times and what we find is that a lot of people are doing business and they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. So they're taking on projects uh, to get the, the money from the people and then they're using that project to fulfill another promise they had made. And I think that's what happened in this particular instance. The um, Norrises bought the tiny house. Um, granted, they were in Texas. They did it online. They, they wired him, what was it? $22,000. $22,000. He got the money. And actually, he played it very, very funny because he didn't get it sent to Georgia. He got it sent to South Carolina. And the laws in South Carolina are different for wiring money than they are in Georgia. So that kind of put a little caveat in it, into it. But basically, he took the money, and he never delivered the house. Of course, he blamed them, saying that they changed the plans or anything. But what it really came down to is that he couldn't deliver the house. He didn't have it. He had no intention of doing it. And he thought that nobody would hold him accountable for it. And what we seem to encounter a lot of times, I know that we've talked about this before, is that all the folks that kind of are behind this swindle, they're, they're one of three kind of people. They're either runners when they're confronted, they're stunned when they're confronted, or they talk a lot. A lot of them are talkers, and that's because they have a big ego, and they think that nobody is ever gonna catch on to what they're doing, so they think that they can convince you or me that what they have done is there's nothing wrong with it, but they didn't do anything wrong. And to add insult to injury, Mr. Reid has hired an attorney and cost the Norrises thousands of dollars in a legal fight, which was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we were able to do that I'm so happy that we were able to accomplish is we were able to get the local district attorney involved in the case. And we were able to bring Mr. Reitis to, to court and to justice and score a win for the Norrises. Explain how we did that. Um, well, what we, what we did is we got all of the paperwork from the Norrises that showed that they had wired the money, that he had cashed the check, that he hadn't delivered the house. Um, we went to the local DA and said, look, this guy stole $22,000. This isn't a, a, a drop in the bucket here. And we were able to provide him with all this paperwork. We also were able to show, and this was the kind of interesting thing, we were able to show that he was still trying to sell these tiny houses after he hadn't delivered one. He, he was so proud of what he was doing. Again, this falls under the talkers. He was so proud of what he was doing. He would post online all about on social media saying, I'm gonna be at this um, convention showing off the tiny houses. So me and my other producer, producing partner, Joe, said, well, we're gonna go and see if he's gonna be there. And we did, and that's what the video shows is me walking up to him, and he obviously knew my name because I had called him several times. He'd never return my phone calls. He couldn't place me at first. And you can almost see the look on his face when he realizes who I am, who I'm with, and what I'm asking about. He continues to try to walk away and getting a little less friendly along the way. And the people that specialize in operating in the ripoff range do know how to manipulate the system. So he hires an attorney, has a, an attorney to slow things down, and that's the excuse he was giving you. Talk to the attorney. That yeah. was all handled. Talk to the attorney. So you've got the fact that he's operating in the ripoff range. We take it to a second level because we're able to hold him accountable and he has to show up in court. But the third level is that we got a result for the Norrises. So and that's the best part. And, and, and I think um, that's what kind of sets what we do apart from what other consumer investigations do. Um, while we do want to build awareness so other people don't get caught up in scams or get caught by bad businesses and stuff, we actually want to solve people's problems because a lot of times 
what happens is, is that folks get in this position, they get to the magistrate court, they don't know what to do, they can't take it any further because they don't have any direction. And we've had to learn ourselves in, in going into this on how to really push things and get the attention of the district attorney's because office. Because here's the sad reality, the folks on the other side of that glass mirror aren't really helpful. That they, they want less work, and so they, they don't encourage you. That's a little rough. I don't know that it's that. Oh, uh, I, I don't know, I, Marnie. Marnie, I, how many I, times have we stood there and been told the wrong thing? I agree. We do run into that a lot. But I also think that it, it's like when we get in these customer service um, runarounds with big corporations. They're in a position that they really can't do anything. They're not the people who can make it happen. So sometimes you have to leapfrog over them like it is in the judicial system. You have to go to the DA. Like we have to do when we're dealing with customer service agents. We don't go to the customer service agents. We go to the marketing department, the people that are behind the image. That don't want a black eye. They, that don't want a black eye because the fact of the matter is, is they, the people, I would say, uh, in the front lines either can't do anything about it or don't see the point. They, they kind of, I, I mean, I've spoken with a, a clerk in a court one time. They said, look, we know that there's nothing that can be done about this. And it's not any of the clerks involved in this one, but we know that we can't do anything and we're sorry that this is so messed up, but this is just the way it is. Okay, so to wrap up, uh, Boyd and Julie Norris are getting a check every month from Mr. Radis. <laughs> a He's little check. A little check, but it's better than nothing. It they is. they were able to find a tiny house builder yeah. and they live in Granbury, Texas and I think they're pretty happy. We stay in touch with them and yeah. it just chalk one up for the good guys. See you next time.